Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Friday tracking our next cold front and here it is on radar coming out of Montana. It's brushing Idaho, it's moving into Wyoming and eventually it's going to move into uh, Utah and also Colorado. So this is the stronger of the fronts this week. Um, there's your radar across the west and uh, anything in blue is going to be snow. Let me take you into Wyoming. You can see it's developing over the top of Montana, Big Sky, Bridger Bowl, Red Lodge, and it's coming out of Idaho Falls, and uh, it's developing over the top of the Tetons, although I'm not forecasting a lot of snow in the Tetons, but some accumulation, and then the whole thing's going to roll down through Utah and into Colorado where it's actually going to stall. I'll talk more about that in a second. We'll check in on the northeast, some lake effect, very light uh, snows up here. Uh, elsewhere. It's really just the lake effect. That's where you're going to see um, the snow accumulation out of this. All right, here's the lay of the land. So this is water vapor satellite imagery. At the low levels, you're looking at the, your, your drier air and your oranges and your reds. The moisture's in the whites and the blues, and you can see the front right here. So it's barreling to the south. It will have a reinforcing shot of cold air with it, but what's going to happen to the front is really more interesting. By the time it arrives down here, somewhere around the northern mountains of Colorado, it's going to stretch out and probably stall. And then on the western side of it, around, well, south of Tahoe, there's an area of low pressure that's going to take control. So that's how it's going to play out. In fact, let me just take you into my bullet points. So cold front today, tomorrow, and 126 for Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. Then it's going to stall. And this has been the point of contention pretty much all week. You know, how far south is this thing going to go? What's the trajectory? Well, it's going to stall somewhere in the central and northern mountains of Colorado and running right over the top now as it looks of the Wasatch. I've had to increase my numbers, uh, my snowfall forecast numbers for the Wasatch as a result of this. But then eventually all the moisture is going to get yanked away uh, with an area of low pressure over California. That California low will sink down, and I am expecting rain in Los Angeles and across many of the wildfires. And snow all the way down to 4,000 feet of elevation, so um, we're going to get the moisture we need. Unfortunately, I think some of it's going to come a little bit too fast, and we might see some debris flows over the burn scars. But that is what's in my forecast. Here is the timeline. Best odds of snow for Big Sky, the Wasatch Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, Tahoe, and the Northeast. So for Big Sky, really your best accumulations now. It's, it's starting to um, develop and will continue to be there today. Light to moderate accumulations, especially Big Sky, Bridger Bowl, and then everybody else is much lighter up there in Montana. In the Wasatch, you've got some light snow coming this afternoon tonight, and then moderate to heavy tomorrow. So tomorrow's really your prime time in the Wasatch. Tetons light on 124. Colorado late late today, light snow comes in, very late. Um, and then it's light, and I've got a, a spread here, light, moderate, and heavy, 125 and 26. Light in the southern mountains, moderate I-70, and then heavy as you go east of Vail up into Summit County, Continental Divide, up to the northern mountains. That's where you're going to see moderate to heavy. Interior BC, um, Really, the next best chance is not until 1.30, so the end of the month. Light to moderate accumulations. Tahoe, light to, light tomorrow, with that area of low pressure taking over. But more so, it's going to be south of Tahoe towards Mammoth and into the southern uh, mountains of uh, like Big Bear, a lot of uh, southern California. In the northeast, only light shots, so nothing has changed there. All right, let's take a closer look at Alta. Utah. This is effective, this mediagram for 9,000 feet. So a very representative of snowbird solitude bright in some ways. Um, so this model, here we are today, the 24th. There's Saturday, 25. There's Sunday, 26. Monday, 27. So this model's finally come up. Yesterday, it was way too light. I talked about that. Now we're up to eight on this model. And I do think probably six, seven, eight, nine, ten inches for Alta Snowbird Solitude Brighton, which means Saturday will be a storm skiing day. Sunday should be a pretty good powder day if you can get out there. Um, so we'll accumulate snow all day on Saturday. Winds today, uh, this afternoon, are going to be a little bit gusty, up to 25, 30 miles an hour. Highs today warming to 23. Tomorrow in the teens most of the day. Teens early, single digits maybe on Sunday morning, and then warming to 21. So that's how it's going to play out. Um, interesting here, I also wanted to point this out, with the snow production, the winds come out of the west-northwest initially, and then they shift to the south. So we're going to have to see what effect that has on the orographics across the Wasatch. 
always fun to see these play out. Okay, let me take you into Colorado. Here's Berthoud Pass. Uh, if you're not familiar with Berthoud, it's up there um, just before you get to Winter Park. It's a big backcountry skiing area. Um, this is the time height forecast, and I'm just looking for green. This is a 72-hour forecast. You read this from right to left through all the vertical layers, and you can see the big wall of green coming. So that happens late tonight, throughout the day tomorrow, into 26. That's going to be our best shot of snow for pretty much the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Very little in the southern mountains. So Berthoud, uh, you've got snow coming. And in fact, here's the snow forecast from this particular model. It cranks out about six inches of accumulation. Um, and again, that's late tonight, throughout the day tomorrow, into very early on the, uh, the 26th. That's Berthoud Pass. Now the other side of this... Um, let me take you over to Bear Lake, Rocky Mountain National Park. Very popular destination for people that visit Rocky Mountain National. It's also a very windy place, uh, but I am this model cranks out a foot of snow up there. So this would be representative of Rocky Mountain National Park, Longs Peak, Mount Meeker, um, a lot of those areas, parts of the Indian Peaks, potentially 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 inches of accumulation up there. And look at the wind for Bear Lake. Um, so the wind today is just off the hook, 90 mile an hour gusts. I mean, that place is just notorious for hurricane force winds. And today, I mean, it would just be unbearable uh, up there. The winds start to drop um, late tonight and into tomorrow. And you can see there, we get some dead air there by the time we get post-storm. So uh, windy and snow there up in Bear Lake next 24 hours. Um, maybe even 36 hours. Okay, here's snow accumulation over time. So on this particular forecast, um, we'll start this at 8 a.m. Uh, today, Friday the 24th. So when you see the light blues on the, the, the chart here, the legend, that's under three inches. That's a light snow right there. Um, now, if you were seeing any of the greens... The greens represent over three inches, basically three to six inches of accumulation. And if you see the yellows, that's over six. All right, so you can see the snow developing over Montana. Move this ahead. Here's lunchtime today. Snow developing over the Tetons, Yellowstone, um, the Laramie Range eventually, the Bighorn Range for sure. And then it drops down through Hagadon. There you go into the Snowy Range, Laramie Ranges. And then here we are by late today. You can see the snow developing across the central and northern mountains of Colorado. And early tomorrow morning, it's 5 a.m. on Saturday, snow is uh, racing south through Wyoming and developing over the central and northern mountains of Colorado, snowing over Denver in the Front Range. Um, so we're going to get snow accumulation over I-25. Keep that in mind if you're going to be driving that. Here we are by lunchtime on Saturday. Look at the green popping up. You know, that's that Bear Lake, Rocky Mountain National, Cameron Pass district. Some of the Front Range high peaks are going to get on that 3 to 6 inch range. And so at this point, you can really see how the pattern is shaping up. You've got snow over the Teton, snow over the, uh, the Wasatch, the High Uintas, and notice the, it's on a diagonal, it's on a line. That's the cold front stalling over the central and northern mountains, in particular the northern mountains. Well, what's going to happen is, watch what happens over time. A lot of the energy, and it's going to continue to snow here. Here we are by late on Saturday. Snow continues over the central and northern mountains of Colorado, Denver, and the Front Range, uh, the Wasatch, parts of Nevada. Um, and then California starts to take over. Here we are by early on Sunday, the 26th, snow developing light over Tahoe, but heavier down towards Mammoth. The low is going to take all the moisture. Here it is, it's grabbing it. Here's lunchtime on Sunday. Here we are by late on Sunday. There's the low spinning up over Southern California. We're going to see snow again down to 4,000 feet of elevation. And here we go by early. This is early on Monday, the 27th. Some decent snow is popping up over maybe three to six inches there in some of the mountain locales, maybe even more up over the 14ers, potentially more. And that'd be rain for Southern California. Um, okay, so here we are by basically lunchtime on uh, Monday. Now, eventually this low is going to eject out towards the four corners, Southern Colorado, Northern New Mexico, and then we'll start to pick up some better accumulation in those areas. But that's just a matter of time. This takes us through early midday on the 27th. My official forecast, all of today through the 26th, so just through the 26th, um, in the Wasatch, I brought the numbers up, five to 10 inches. So your higher end amounts up there in Alta, Snowbird, Solitude, Brighton. 
Up in the Tetons, about three inches will probably do it. Four to five, Bridger Bowl, Big Sky, about an inch for Hoggeton and Red Lodge. Less as you go up towards northwest Montana. And I don't have anything for BC, Alberta. You're going to have to wait until the end of the month. I uh, hate to say it. Uh, zeroed out in the Pacific Northwest, but, and I wanted to speak on this, the pattern for late in the month in the first week of February is looking really active across the West, the Pacific Northwest, BC, Interior Rockies. Um, the flow looks rich and the jet looks strong. So these, <laughs> where they're all zeroed out now where I've got zeros, those numbers, I mean, they're going to go up big. I, I think that's going to be the case uh, once we get there. So it's just, it's a waiting game. A little bit for the Sierra. In Colorado, but mostly in the central and northern mountains, especially Vail East and the north, we could see six. I've got six up there at Loveland, A Basin, Winter Park, 10 to 12 through Rocky Mountain National, up to Cameron Pass, Eldora. Um, about eight up there in Steamboat, but probably 10 to 12 up on Buffalo Pass. And very small numbers down in southern Colorado. Western Slope up there in the, uh, the West Elks, probably three to four inches Crested Butte, Aspen, Snowmass, and the Highlands, and a couple for the uh, the Grand Mesa and Powderhorn. All right, up in the Northeast, no change really from yesterday. One to two, maybe three inches of accumulation through the 26th. Um, the lake effect over Snow Ridge will start to increase beyond the scope of this forecast. I've got three there through the 26th, but then the numbers go up. Um, as the lake effect really kicks in beyond this. All right, guys, we'll end on the big western map here. We've got snow coming. The front is barreling to the south, so the numbers will start to tick up between today, tomorrow, and the 26th. Thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.